Anil says, Father, I would leave this burden of benchmarking at your feet as I feel that mind is trying to grasp it. Yes. We'll read transcripts later. Now this trouble with this checker guy or this benchmarking, you see, even if I say, don't benchmark, it will say, okay, I've dropped 50% of my benchmark. So it makes a benchmark even of that. <laughs> we cannot, we really cannot do this. You see. We cannot do this. <laughs> do this. Somewhere, something just hits home and it flowers in the play of consciousness, playing as the deluded one and coming to this place of freedom. When I sat at the feet of my father, I didn't do anything. I didn't not even not do anything. <laughs> there was a stopping of doing and not doing. Did I do that? No, I didn't. <laughs> Did I not do that? No, I didn't. <laughs> so just, if it feels like we have a job to do or there's something I can do, as much innocence as possible, allow these words to percolate your being. Your being itself is sharing them. And these words will guide your attention to wherever it has to go. It will guide your inner insight to wherever they have to go. Because these are the words of your own intuitive presence. You don't have to work at it in that way. That's why I said also in the book that it is consciousness speaking with consciousness. No personal intervention is needed. Because to the person, everything becomes something to attain, something to get to. Even if I say, get rid of the checker guy. Don't buy the story of the checker guy. You start to check. Have I got rid of the checker guy? <laughs> that is the checker guy. <laughs> we don't need to meet at that level. Something is already moving here. In your heart, you know this. The words of satsang, the presence of satsang, all the play of the sangha, all of this is pointing you to that which is your unchanging reality. The mind that only understands phenomenal quantities and that too a very few of those cannot be the guide on this journey. And if you choose two partners, choose the guru and you choose the mind. You yourself will find it very uncomfortable. You will find it a struggle, the spiritual journey. I say, I take some examples sometimes. It's like trying to sit on two chairs at the same time or try to ride two horses at the same time. Go with that voice which reminds you of your true unchanging nature. Let go of the hand of the one that is only reminding you of your limitation, which is just the mind. It is telling you that you are a spiritual seeker. It 
is telling you that you are a good or bad person. Both cannot be true. There is one voice which is saying that you are the unlimited, unbound, unbounded, unborn self. And one voice which is saying that you are just this container of flesh and blood and bones. If you listen to both these voices at the same time, it's going to be a struggle. So, Ashtavatra in his second or third verse said, shun the senses like the poisonous snake or something like that. I will say, just shun your next thought in that way. You don't have to even be so strong. <laughs> just, you just laugh at it and say, no, I just don't buy what you're selling. <laughs> Ride one horse. It's more comfortable that way. <laughs> so the horse of the mind now, in its most dominant aspect as a spiritual seeker, being this checker guy, gives you ideas about how far you've come in your spiritual progress. None of that is needed. You don't need that report card. I am telling you that you are free. You don't need this report card anymore. 